So hello and welcome to lesson 3 of our study of differential equations. <coughs> so in lesson 1 and lesson 2, you were introduced to differential equations and how to classify them. So in lesson 3, we'll be learning how to show that a given function is a solution to a differential equation, okay? So I'm going to kind of off a final year student of mathematics in UST, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. So let's just take this lesson from the known to the unknown, okay? And I know we all know what linear equations are. So for instance, something like this. It's a linear equation, s plus 2 equals 5. So <coughs> when you are giving x to be 3, we know that x equals to 3 is a solution to this linear equation because when you put it inside, you get 5 will be equal to 5. There will be an identity or it is going to satisfy the equation given. So we see x equals 3 is a solution to this linear equation. So now let's shift our attention to differential equations. When do we say a particular function it's a solution to a differential equation. <coughs> so, a solution of a differential equation is any function, let's say phi, that satisfies the given differential equation on a specified interval. Okay, so that's the definition for what the solution of a differential equation is. So, let's take some examples. So we have to show that for any values of the arbitrary constant c1 and c2, <coughs> this function here is a solution to this differential equation, okay? So if this function here is a solution to this differential equation, that means it has to satisfy it. But when you put it inside that differential equation, you have to get an identity, okay? So here's a function given to us, and it's a differential equation. So you can see that we have d squared y, the s squared here, right? So that means that we have to differentiate this y twice so that we can make substitution. So we have y equals c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. <coughs> Differentiating it once will give us the y dx to be equal to you know, when you differentiate cos, you get negative sign, right? So you get minus c1 sine x plus c2 cos x. Then we have to differentiate that one again. So taking a second derivative will give us <coughs> minus c1 cos x minus c2 sine x, right? So now we have d squared y, the s squared. And we were given y in the question. So we make substitution into this differential equation which was given to us. So making substitution gives us minus c1 cos x minus c2 sine x. Recall that the whole of this is, and this is our y. So you write like this will cancel this. This will also cancel this. And then we'll get zero will be equal to zero. So now we have an identity. So it means that indeed the function y equals c1 cos x plus c2 sine x is a solution to the differential equation. <coughs> so now let's move on to a second question. Okay, so this is trying to talk about on the interval. Okay, so since sine x and cos x are continuous in the entire row line, the solution is defined in the entire row line. Okay. So question two says so I should show that y equals one over s squared minus one is the solution to this differential equation on this interval, but not any larger interval containing i. So there's a function and it's our differential equation. So you can see we have y prime here. So that means we have to find y prime 
and be able to make substitution into the differential equation and hope that we get an identity. And that will show that indeed that function is a solution to the differential equation. So you know y equals 1 over s squared minus 1 can be written as y equals s squared minus 1 power negative 1. So when we differentiate this, you know how to differentiate functions of this form, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we differentiate, we will bring this one here, minus 1. We differentiate what's inside, we get times 2x. Then s squared minus 1, we subtract 1 from the power, so we get negative 2. <coughs> and this is the same as, what we have here is the same as this one, right? So that's y prime. So now making substitution into the differential equation, which was given, that's y prime plus 2xy squared equals 0. This will be y prime plus 2x. Then this is y. Then squared, y squared, right? Okay. So you know, when you have something like e over b all squared, this is the same as e squared over what? e squared. So 1 all over s squared minus 1 squared is the same as 1 squared over s squared minus 1 all squared which is the same as 1 over s squared minus 1 all squared what we can find here right so <coughs> when you multiply it you get minus 2x over s squared minus 1 all squared plus 2x over s squared minus 1 all squared so this cancels this and we get 0 equals 0. So that means that indeed the function given is a solution to the differential equation. And it's a solution on the interval i equals negative 1, 1. Right? You know this is an open interval. You can recall that from your real function and real analysis class. Right? So that means that all numbers between negative 1 and 1. But negative 1 and 1 itself is not part. This is because, see, you see we have 1 over s squared minus 1. When x is 1, we get 1 minus 1, which will give us 1 over 0. So it will be undefined. Because of the squared, when it is negative 1, we also get undefined, right? So there's a reason why we see that 1 over s squared minus 1 is not defined as x equals plus or minus plus or minus 1, right? And therefore, there could not be any solution on any interval containing either of these two points, right? Because at those points, the solution will be undefined. So let's take a third example. It says prove that y equals e minus s plus sine x is a solution of this differential equation. So um, you can see that we have to find the, the squared y, the s squared. So I'll be able to make substitution inside. So this is y. When we differentiate y once, we get this. And when we differentiate it twice, we get this. OK. I hope you know how to do the differentiation. Yeah. So now making substitution into this. The whole of this will be the squared y ds squared. And this is how what y. So you can see that sine x minus sine s goes away. Then we have this here and this here, which will give us 2e minus s equals 2e minus x. So you can see we have an identity. So that means the function given is indeed a solution to the differential equation. So given a differential equation, this is how we show that a particular function is a solution to it. That function should satisfy the differential equation on a specified interval. Okay. All right. So we have some trial questions here that you can practice them. Okay. So you have to show that y equals ln x is a solution of this differential equation. And the second one is you have to show that y equals x power negative 3 over 2 is a solution of this differential equation here for x greater than what 0 okay so all the best if you couldn't get anything you can go over the video again and 
trust me in the understanding will come so in our next video we'll talk about the general solution of a differential equation and how to determine a differential equation from a general solution so thank you and see you in the next video